QuickBooks Online 2023 e-commerce QBO commerce integration with Shopify, Amazon, or eBay. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to cog up top and switching the view down below. Let's duplicate some tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it. Right clicking the duplicated tab and duplicating it again. Back to the tab to the middle, reports on the left hand side, we're opening up the first one, the balance sheet. Let's go to the tab to the right, the reports on the left again, this time the profit and loss, the income statement. Closing up the hamburger, let's run this for the full year this time, a 2025 010125 tab, 123125 tab, running it. Go into the middle tab, same thing, closing the hamburger. Changing the range to the same, 010125, 12.31.25, and running it. Let's go back to the tab to the left. We've been thinking about e-commerce situations where we're selling inventory, but not on ground in a store, but rather online in the cloud with the help and use of third-party apps, such as a Shopify or an Amazon, and thinking about ways that we can pull that information from the third-party app into our accounting software. In prior presentations, we thought about manually pulling that information as well as just simply using support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. The bank feeds to record our data. Now we wanna move on to the QuickBooks Online integration that they have in the QuickBooks Online system. So if you open up QuickBooks Online and you go down to the Commerce tab, uh, that's the integration that we're gonna be taking a look at now. So the general concept, it's gonna be much the same, very similar to what we have looked at before, remembering that our methods for being able to pull this information in from a third-party platform into QuickBooks is either number one, just integrating the bank feeds and not using any other integration, but you're gonna lose data if you do that, it won't be as detailed, or you can use a manual entry system, which we have taken a look in prior presentations, and that system will be similar to the next system we're looking at now, which is QBO Commerce, because the QBO Commerce is doing what most people kind of recommend on the bookkeeping side for many people that use a third-party commerce platform, which is don't pull in all of the information in order for in order to have like each sale recorded, to have each customer recorded because it's going to overload the information in QuickBooks and in order to properly account for things like the inventory on a perpetual inventory system, you would have to set up all the items properly and so on. And it could get quite complex uh, to, to set all that up. And it might be redundant because you already have that information for the most part in the Shopify side of things. So the idea would be that we're going to consolidate the data in the similar process we did with the journal entries, but see if we can automate that process. So QuickBooks is going to pull in that that information and try to and try to group it together for us. Now, third-party apps uh, could do a similar type of thing, like an A2X is quite popular. And again, if you're looking at third-party apps, there's some apps that might group the data together in a similar fashion as we're talking now, like an A2X. And there's some apps that possibly means that you can pull in uh, all of the data and try to recreate the information in QuickBooks Online and try to track the inventory, for example, on, on a perpetual inventory system. Again, most a lot of bookkeepers don't really recommend that for many people trying to integrate QuickBooks into third-party platforms because it could be complicated and bog down the system. So if we look at the commerce within QuickBooks Online, 
It's still relatively new as of the time of this recording, but it looks like they're trying to do the, the most simplified type of thing, which would make sense for QuickBooks Online. They're trying to streamline and automate things. So it looks like they're, they're doing what most people kind of recommend uh, in grouping this information as they pull it in. But because they're trying to make it simplified, there may be less options in it as there would be if you use some kind of other integrations like an A2X or something like that. So first I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on over here to the sample company file, which you can find and, and you might wanna open a separate window if you wanna open these two files up at the same time. If you have two files open so that it doesn't mix up your logins, so you can open an incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots, new incognito window, type into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive, select the option that has Intuit in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, and that's how we get here. I just wanna scroll down to the commerce section in here because it's not turned on yet. So if you have not connected commerce, then the connection process is generally the easy process. So if you have something like a Shopify or an eBay or an Amazon, then you need to connect to it. And to do that, I'll just read through this quickly here. Seamlessly connect your sales channel will automatically bring your orders and payouts so you can track everything in one place. You can check out the little video if you'd like to get more information on it there. Brief summary, uh, match payouts with bank deposits, run reports and see trends at a glance, stay on top of cash flow effortlessly. And then of course you can go through the process of connecting your channel, choosing the item that you wanna connect. For example, we're, we turned on a Shopify channel, bring in your past orders. So what this means, you can uh, view sales trends and insights across sales. So how far back do you want to go? So it depends on the platform in terms of how limited oftentimes or how far back you can go to bring in the data. Oftentimes you would wanna bring the data in for an entire year if you, if you can. And so I'm gonna say next, and then uh, connect your Shopify. In a few quick steps, uh, we'll get your accounts synced. First, you'll choose how much of your Shopify data to share with us. Two, next we'll take you to Shopify to sign in your account and authorize. And three, then we start bringing in the transactions. So I will continue here. Need consent, Intuit needs consent here. This is where they're gonna bring the data in from. And then we can say, okay, I agree and consent. And then you'd have to finally give them your Shopify email. They already have the dot Shopify here and you can't really get rid of that. So <laughs> when you when you type in your, your URL, make sure that you're accounting for the fact that this piece is gonna be connected to the end of it. If you double it up, if you put if you put Shopify.com twice in there, it won't recognize your URL. All right. So that is that. So that's the connection process. So once it's connected, it's gonna look something like this. Now we have a very basic information. This is our Shopify store. So we're imagining stuff is happening over here in our Shopify store. We're making sales over here. We're tracking the inventory on this side of things, at least from, from a unit perspective so that I can stock my inventory and have sufficient inventory to meet what I presume will be the demand in the future and whatnot. Remember that as we pull this information, as we've talked about with the prior methods, we're breaking out the concept of, of the sales and inventory happening at the same time. In other words, we're not using a perpetual inventory system. We're gonna use a periodic inventory system. So we're mainly thinking then about this integration pulling in the sales side of things, and we're still gonna have to deal with the the inventory side of things it having its own issues because it's going to be tied not to the payouts but to an inventory flow assumption like a fifo or weighted average so we'll deal with that later this integration isn't generally designed at this point and quickbooks could give you more options in the future but i would think that they're going to try to keep it simplified and therefore not and have the so therefore your inventory will be a separate kind of thing we're pulling in the sales side of things we'll talk about inventory uh later okay so the sales are happening here and then we've got we talked about before our finance reports here and our 
analysis. So in, in our analysis, we have our reports, which can give us the detail about the payouts that, that are going to be happening. And then we looked at our finance reports and our payouts to see to pull the information in. So these payouts right here represent multiple sales that are happening on the third party platform that are being grouped together in one particular payout. When I come over here into QuickBooks, then I'm not going to have a system where I pull in every transaction and try to enter a separate sales receipt for every customer and every transaction, not pulling in all that kind of information. We're only going to pull in the summary of the information that's going to tie into the payouts. And that's the, and then and then we're not going to be dealing with a perpetual inventory system in that case as well. Okay, so then if I go down here into commerce, let's just take a look at the overview. We've got three tabs up top. I'll close the hand boogie overview and then the orders and then the payments. Now note that most of this stuff stuff, if I go to the overview is just for appearance, meaning it's not actually pulling the information into the QuickBooks system. Uh, so you got to keep so it's kind of giving you a nice look that is similar to the look that you would see over here on on Shopify. It's just mirroring the same data in a different kind of format over here, but it's not adding to your QuickBooks. So that's what this first page uh, is basically doing. It's giving you kind of a summary of that information that's coming directly from your third party store like a Shopify. Then you have your channels over here. So here's the channel. Now, some people could have, of course, Shopify and Amazon and, multi and eBay, and you might have multiple Ebays and Amazons and whatnot. So then you would list out the different channels uh, would be listed on the right hand side. We've just got the Shopify. If you wanted to connect a sales channel, then you can go into the connect button up top and you can connect multiple sales channels. The number of sales channels that you can connect you know, could be limited to the subscription uh, that you have. And then you've got this, will, which will take you a shortcut to the transactions and the profit and loss. And you can take a look at some tips on down below. Then, and by the way, if, if I look at my Shopify for like this analysis, you can see this analysis, you know, is similar to what they're pulling in uh, to QuickBooks here. So in any case, then I can go into the orders. Now the orders, once again, are not actually the things that are going to be posted to our system. This is mirroring the orders that are over here that are just pulling in each individual order. We're not, if we were to record each individual order into QuickBooks, that would look something like it would pull these each individual orders and into like a sales receipt uh, kind of thing. That's not what's happening. It's just showing you some of the detail within QuickBooks. So you don't have to go to Shopify to see some of this detail. So for example, if I go over here and I look at my reports, for example, and I look at my total sales and your reports could differ depending on what, you know, how much you're paying on Shopify, what tier you're in, but here's, you know, each of my uh, transactions, the individual purchases that took place that are pulling it in here, uh, 1001, 1002, 1003, and so on for those individual items. But again, these aren't actually recording anything. Then we've got the refunds and back to the sales order and then the payouts. So these are the payouts that are actually happening. So this gives you a, a summary of the payout. The payout represents the money that's coming out of uh, Shopify and is gonna eventually hit our bank account. So we expect the payout to eventually go into our checking account. That's gonna be the idea. So for example, if I go to the Shopify store and look at my payouts, here's that 715 uh, of the payout. Here's the 715 here. If I wanna see the detail of that payout, it's pulling in the detail to help make the journal entry. And just like what we did over here with our with our journal entry, when we had like the two, you know, the 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 components of the journal entry that we pulled in from Shopify, it's doing the same thing here. We've got the sales side of things. Here's gonna be the transactions that are included in that particular payout. And then we have the expenses side of things. And this is showing uh, the Shopify expenses. So that's similar to what we had over here when we looked at 
uh, the two the two reports that are going to be in play here. If you go into your analytics in like a Shopify and take a look at the reports and we look at the total sales report, then I don't think it's including that dollar right there. So here's the, you know, the gross sales, the net sales and the shipping and so on. And then this, uh, it's really not including that $1 right there. So it comes to 870. Uh, 870 is is this amount right here. And then uh, if I go back on over here and I go to my payouts, which is in the finance and the payouts, then we can see that all of the all, all of those transactions are included in this payout and then they charged a fee for the payout fee which is you know the the fee for them to to, to do the financing of it and, or to facilitate the transaction and that comes out to that 155 so those are the two sides that they that quickbooks nice and neatly pulls into this little review uh item here so you can see it there which is nice but this still isn't posting anything so then uh, if I want to, you, you have uh, transactions to review. If I go into those transactions, if I say go to those transactions, they then I, they took me up here from the commerce tab up to the banking tab. Now in the banking tab, we have our bank feeds, which we connected to the bank. So we expect that $7 to eventually hit the checking account. We would, we would see that, uh, that amount that we were talking about 715 i think it was hit the checking account it would be in here and but we're trying to break out the the detail of it in a similar way like we did with the with the manual method so if i go to the apps tab this is where it's going to store that data so now you've got your apps tab here's the shopify store it's, it looks similar kind of like to the bank feeds if i had multiple channels i can toggle between you know the multiple channels here and then you've got a similar layout for review reviewed and uh excluded you can change basically your date range here and here's the detail of the transaction so it's got the sales it's got the shipping income and then there's the subtotal and then the selling fees so you can see this lump sum is going to be the 715 that's going into our checking account but it's breaking that information out basically kind of with a journal entry format here, not in the bank feeds, but in, in the app transaction. I can uh, go to more of the detail here. Let's take a look at it in this case. And this takes us back to that detail page that we looked at before to give us the actual sales that took place and the expenses. Now, before I record this, let's just take a look at how we can adjust the mapping if we if we want to see what it's going to do when we when we actually record this item so let's go back down to the commerce tab and i'm going to close the hamburger and i'm going to go to the to the overview and each one of these uh channels we're, is going to have a drop down up top so if i hit the drop down i can go into the settings so let's take a look at the settings so up top we've got the general settings deposit account uh the checking account payment account the checking account payout confirmation how would you like to confirm pay payments this setting takes effect for future transactions the default is manual because i'm going to say hey look i want to see these in that that transactions tab and then i want to manually say okay I, I approve of that transaction pull it in it's probably recommended to do that for a while until you get to the point that you are comfortable and then you can automate the transaction because like with the bank feeds nothing's really affecting your financial statements until you pull it in from that feeds transaction and so you probably want to double check it on a manual system and then pull it over so this one says check each payout uh, in for review then confirm and this will automatically confirm connect after you, so this would be the disconnect if you wanted to disconnect here if we go into the items they have the sales items, which is going to be pointing to uh, the default in QuickBooks sales Shopify item, shipping, Shopify uh, shipping item, and then discount Shopify discount. You can edit these items here and then change, change them here. And so I'll cancel that. These are going to be the defaults. And then you've got the customers and vendors. Now note, 
we're not pulling in all the customers. All the customer data is gonna be over here in your Shopify store, and that's probably where you want it because you're usually gonna be a bulk seller. You're trying to sell a bunch of stuff on like a Shopify or an Amazon. You don't really need to know all the information about the customers other than put their email on your email list most of the time, right? So they're not, so they need to have a customer. So they're just going to put it into a generic customer, meaning this is going to be one customer for all transactions that are going through your Shopify store. If you need to have more detail about a particular transaction, then you're not going to go to it in QuickBooks because we didn't pull in all that data, but rather you're going to go to the Shopify, right? And then on the advanced, these are the mapping accounts. So these are kind of like the defaults that it sets up basically automatically. So you've got a clearing account. This holds Shopify payouts before they're reconciled with your bank account. So just like we did in the manual method, we still have to deal with this clearing account, which means when the money's coming in, it's not going to deposit directly into the checking account. It's going to put it into the clearing account, and then we can match it to the deposit that's going to clear the checking account, which will bring the clearing account back down. Same concept as we looked at with the manual method. It's just trying to automate it now. Then you've got the sales. Shopify item sales is, is uh, QuickBooks categorization. Shopify sales income account. Shipping income. These are the charges that you're going to have for the shipping. It's going to go to the, sh to the Shopify shipping income account. Uh, and then you have the discounts. Promotions applied to sale. Shopify discounts. It's going to break that one out. And then selling fees commissions and fees related to sales it's going to go into the shopify selling fees if you want to adjust these accounts then you can map it differently right i can go into here here's my list of accounts i can add uh, new accounts if i so choose so i'm going to close that but but i'm going to keep the defaults here so if, you, if you've been doing your system prior to this and you already have mapped out accounts then you might want to use those accounts and you can change the mapping here to the accounts that you have set up. And then you've got subscription fees, what you pay for your Shopify subscription. Shopify subscription fees is, is, the, is where it's going to go. And then adjustments, channel adjustments and miscellaneous, Shopify other adjustments. And then you've got the sales tax based on your region, Shopify sales tax. And then we've got the reserve balance, payout balance reserved by channel. Shopify uh, reserve balance. So that's the general mapping. So if I close this back out and I open up my chart of accounts, for example, if I go down to my accounting down here and I look at my chart of accounts, when I set up the Shopify, it set up those accounts for me, right? So here's a clearing account. Here's the Shopify item here. And uh, it set up some of those uh, those uh, accounts, Shopify sales tax could have set that up, but it's good. Those, those accounts that are mapped out are now over here in the, the chart of accounts. I've added a bunch of other accounts as well when we've been doing the practice problems. So it's getting a little muddled at this point. Notice if I go in the sales tab and I look at the customers, uh, then we've got our customers here and it's set up this Shopify customer. So it's not gonna add all the customers, of course. Again, it's just made one customer that's gonna be our lump sum customer. Now also remember there's the same kind of issue with this system as we had with the manual system, which is that Shopify is now kind of connecting to QuickBooks so that QuickBooks can pull in the detailed information breaking out the deposit. But if you're dealing with other payment processors like a PayPal or a Stripe, for example, meaning customers are paying you through PayPal or Stripe, something other than Shopify pay, not, like not using just their credit card, for example, on Shopify pay or something, then you might have other uh, items that are going to be f on the PayPal level that you're going to have to deal with for fees on that level. So, so this is going to be a common problem with many different kinds of integrations that we that we saw so that's something that you've got to be mindful of uh as well so just you know so keep in do you have so the question would be do you have paypal turned on can they pay you through paypal or can they only pay you through the shopify pay uh if you have the paypal turned on you want to make sure that you you have a system that's going to be dealing with 
the PayPal component of the payment, similar process or problem that we talked about with the manual system. All right, so then if we were gonna approve these, let's go back on up top into the banking and say, let's go ahead and add this one. So this one came through, we, we analyzed it and we didn't auto add it. We said we wanna add it manually. So let's go ahead and add it. Boom, the 715 is, is in place. Now I should be able to map that in the future. I'll be able, I would be able to see in the checking account that 715 and I can map, I can match it out. But let's see what happens over here. Let's let's run this for for 010123 to 123123 23 this time on the balance sheet. So note that it's got it's clearing account here, but it actually puts the transaction in and out of the clearing account and does put it into the checking account ultimately. So if I go into the checking account, there's our uh, 7.15 note however if i go back on over here and exit out that if i go into this account the clearing account what it actually did was go in and out of this clearing account so within this clearing account you've got these transactions it created a sales receipt and expense and then a deposit and it basically increases and decreased the clearing account as part of the transaction but ultimately did put it into the checking account which does remove one added step on our end if the deposit you know comes in perfectly to the to the exact dollar amount because now it should be in our in our checking account over here so if I go on to my my checking account if I go into my bank feeds and go into my banking checking if the if the deposit that hits my checking account matches exactly what that journal entry did then notice it'll just match up here and, and it'll record a match so when i record the deposit on the bank feed side of things no new transaction will happen it's just basically helping with with the bank reconciliation we're just saying okay we found that it matches out to to the deposit that was put in there by the journal entry process that was done through the bank feed shopify app connection all right so let's take a look at the income statement if i go to the income statement and i'm running it for 2023 because that's when we put the information in and now we've got the shopify sales so if i go into the shopify sales we've got our detail here i'm going to hit the drop down on the shopify sales and it created in essence a, a sales receipt but it's a group sales receipt so the sales receipt is the form typically used for a cash based type of sale that you would use in a cash register but note the customer is not each customer it's just one lump sum customer that was used to create that sales receipt so if i go back on over and exit then the we've got that we've got the the shopify shipping income so it broke out the uh shipping income that we charged for us and once again uh it did that here with the sales receipt form going back on over and exit. So instead of just having a journal entry, it did kind of a similar thing we did with a journal entry with the sales receipt. It's got the Shopify selling fees, which it did put under the categorization of uh, cost of goods sold. So if I go into the selling fees and hit the drop down here, now we've got the selling fees that it broke out individually per that data that we saw that's pulling in for all the, the different sales transactions that happened. Let's X out of that and then we've got the the shipping selling fees here and then that is it now if i go back on over to the first tab and we go to our app transactions notice we were in the for review then we added it so now it's in the reviewed section and you can see kind of the detail which will link to what it did here as well so i can go into this one this is the the sales receipt that it generated you can see what it built it built a sales receipt which is typically the form used for a cash based sales at like a cash register situation that we just uh, saw sales receipt and i'll close that back out here's the expense form that was generated so expense form like a check form decreasing the checking account but it's putting it into the uh the, the, the clearing account that it made up here specifically for this expense form so we have those items and then we've got the deposit form which is of course the form typically used 
to increase the checking account. So we made the deposit here, not with the bank feeds, but with the integration of the, of the app. And then if I go back on over to the first tab, then we went to the banking and we can connect this out, which will just not record anything new because it's already in the checking account. It'll just verify helping us with our, our, our reconciliation process. So it looks like, you know, they're doing a similar process that we did with the journal entry, grouping everything together with this integration, which is kind of what is recommended. Obviously it, it works quite well if you have a if you have a situation where your where your payment structure is tied directly to the to the uh to the shopify store in this case that the other payment processors just like we saw with the journal entry methods will add another wrinkle uh, you know into the system that we'll have to deal with you hope possibly you can kind of uh, work around with that system they recorded the transactions not with like a normal journal entry but rather they used the forms like the deposit forms expense forms and sales receipt forms but they made group deposit forms sales form, right that are combining uh sales together so the general concept is much the same we saw with the journal entry method so now the the general idea then would be with our, with the methods that you want to use would be do you want to just do the simple method where you integrate the bank account do you want to then use a journal entry method which has a lot of manual work to it of course do you want to use an integration possibly the quickbooks integration here which is still a new type of integration but it does look like they're trying to do in essence what a lot of people recommend for the best practices of the third party app integrations or applications like an like an a2x type of system but even as you're doing these integrations you've got to think about uh what's actually happening which is similar to what we did with the journal entry it's pulling in the information in a summary kind of format uh it's not pulling in all of the information in terms of every uh sales type of transaction and you would think that the quickbooks system here looks to be set up the way the quickbooks system is set up for the particular apps that shopify amazon and ebay and it's trying to trying to make it as simple as possible which means you might have less options than maybe you would have with a third party integration so so if you need to do more customization or do something different maybe the third party integrations might give you more to do with that but obviously you would think the quickbooks having it in in house here would be is kind of nice cuz then you don't have a third party you don't have the payment for the third party and you don't have to deal with a third party application so uh, we'll have to see what QuickBooks does with it uh, uh, going forward. But the, there would be a similar process if you used a third-party app. Usually, most people recommend an app that does kind of a similar thing as we saw here, pulling the information in in like a group format, basically making a journal entry format and using a clearing account system as we saw with the manual method.